Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and one of the questions that I get asked a lot from newer players during this 6th anniversary event as I'm recording this is, how the heck do I beat Zeo at the end of episode floor, chapter 10? Right? So in this video, I'm going to show you how I did it using mostly a free-to-play team with free-to-play gear and, well, a 5-star artifact that happened to be Bloodstone, which hopefully you can pick up with your sixth anniversary selectors if you're watching this in the future and that's not available hopefully you have access to it if you don't feel free to use uh, whatever your best aoe damage dealer is in the slot or perhaps a second healer but this strategy that i'm using is all free to play characters with the artifact bloodstone so let's talk about zeo real fast he has two things that you have to be aware of throughout the fight he uses this move disappear it will always target a random ally stun them and put them in stealth and push them back by 50% CR. Unless you have a knight on your team. In which case he always targets a knight. You want a knight. Otherwise the fight becomes massively RNG. And could just screw you over so many different ways. Stealth is a buff. But in this fight actually functions as a debuff. And there's no way to get rid of it. Basically because your tank is always going to be stealth. All the single target attacks are going to be going at your damage dealers. And at your healers. So healing is a must. Having the... A way for you to get rid of stun from disappear is also a must in my opinion because obviously you need access to your knight you can't just have them be stunned the entire fight they need to be able to use their skills in order to deal with the next mechanic as well as help protect your team so let's talk about the main mechanic of the fight dark aura at the start of every turn whether that's a friend or a foe that character's dark aura level increases by one when zeo takes a turn if he is at Dark Aura level 4, if anyone I should say is at Dark Aura level 4, they die instantly. So it's very important that you don't let Dark Aura get to level 4. Also, if one of his foes makes it to Dark Aura level 4 and he starts a turn, he uses an AoE attack that does huge damage and also injures your whole team. So it's important to kill the adds before they hit level 4 and get your characters uh, out of level 4 before they die in one hit. So how do you get them out of dark aura level four simply just soul burn with the character having efficient soul burns is the key to this fight just soul burn you'll reset your dark aura level no danger of dying i'll be pointing out in the live commentary when we're soul burning why we're soul burning things like that now you may have also noticed if you try to do this fight already there's only one encounter so there's no stages for you to build souls so the way for you to build souls is off of this ad darkness infused mana lamp it has incomplete darkness as a unique effect whenever it gets attacked you get three souls. Pretty simple. Can't get souls from counterattacks or extra attacks. So uh, unity and things like that, not really going to help you. Raz S2, not really going to help you, right? So that's the way for you to build souls throughout this fight. Now, the thing is, if you're going to be attacking the lamp to get souls so you don't die to Dark Aura, you're not really dealing any damage. So the only way for you to actually get souls and deal damage at the same time is to play characters with a ton of AoE in the kit, which is where our team comes in, right? The team that I am playing is Roz, Bomb Model, Kana, Tamarin, and Mercedes here. So Roz is going to be our tank. You can play whatever you want for the tank, but I went with Roz because he is free. He has defense buff, which is super good. And also he can give us burst damage with his S2. If you want to see his stats, here they are. Arius is going to be our artifact. Speed boots, health percentage here on the ring, health percentage on the necklace, right? Skill tree is fully maxed out. Level 60, 6 star awoken. Our primary damage dealer for the fight is Mercedes. Mercedes is incredible for this fight. I'm using all arena gear as well as free gear that you get from the 6th anniversary event. If you don't have it, feel free to use whatever you have laying around from hunts or from the adventurer's path. So let's talk about what makes Mercedes so amazing. Attack buff on Blazing Eye of Cal, right? Big AoE damage on top of that. So you can hit not only Zeo, but the Lantern at the same time and all the adds that Zeo spawns. Dimensional Rupture. Does huge damage, strips buffs off of enemies, procs twice, generates a ton of souls, also procs off of magic for friends. And most importantly, Divine Bolt. So she can basic skill the Lantern and still deal damage to Zeo. So you can basically build souls with her like nobody's business and still put out significant damage. She's also freely available for everybody. So Mercedes is my choice, my go-to for your primary DPS. Primary healer, Tamarin. Shouldn't have to explain why, best PvE healer in the entire game does everything attack buffs CR pushes right uh, full cleanses tons of healing make sure song of Fars is a plus seven shining star plus one wanderous potion vial 
should be your artifact in this fight, no matter what soul order you're on, because it helps massively with making sure that your knight doesn't stay stunned the entire fight. Even if it's not plus 27, it's a low rank, use it. If it, you just get bad RNG, all you have to do is just keep replaying the fight. Speed on the boots, health percentage here on the ring, health percentage on the necklace. Try to get Tamarin, Raz, all of your characters as fast as you can get them. Mercedes doesn't need to be as fast, but if you can try to get her to be faster, that's good. Now let's talk about the flex spot. I went with Bomb Model Kana because she functions as both a healer as well as a damage dealer. So how we used Bomb Model Kana, Bloodstone, whenever she deals damage, it's going to heal the team. That's great. Bomb Model Kana basically functions as a second copy of Mercedes. AoE attack, speed buff for the team, constant dual attacking, which procs Bloodstone all the time. Uh, that's going to not generate souls off the lantern, but give you more healing for your team. Quick Bombardment is exactly the same as uh, Divine Bolt for Mercedes. So you can hit the Lantern with Kana, deal damage to the boss or the adds, and still pick up the souls. So that's why we're playing her. Also, she is a free 5-star you get from the game's connections. If you were on this fight, you already have access to this connection. You need only be Episode 3 to unlock it, do all the quests, it's fine. You'll notice that I ha don't have it done. That's just because I pulled her off a random Elemental Summon, so I don't have to complete it. But she is freely available. There you go. That's our team. Now that you understand how the fight works, what the team is, let's just get to it. Just jump right into the fight. So at the start here, Raz is going to get hit by Disappear. He's going to get pushed back. He's going to get stuck. There is no salvation. Add spawn. Kana goes first for me because she's the fastest. We S3 for not only damage, but speed buff and souls. <laughs> Potion Vial procs. If it doesn't for you, feel free to restart. Hit the lantern so we can pick up souls. Raz S3 here for not only the souls, but the healing to himself and the defense buff, most importantly, for the whole team. Call here for Mercedes. Gives attack buff to the rest of our team. Big magic for friends counter. All right, let's do this. We have Raz S1 the lantern. Hit the lantern again. S2 a tamarind. Go away. Try to stop me. Raz stunned again. Lantern hit. Mercedes? S2 Pepper on Mercedes. We can hit the lantern again. I'll protect you. Hmm. So now we want to start worrying about getting our Dark Aura level down. So let's Soul Burn and try and kill one of these ads. So now this is the kind of notification you get when you're about to die if you don't Soul Burn. So we're going to Soul Burn with Kana to speed up our team. Let's Soul Burn here with Tamarin, see if we can kill this. We can hit the lantern again. Should we get started? Lantern again with Roz. Fully charged. You can't close Alright, now we can idle mode now that we've stalled enough. And now there's two schools of thought here. You could keep hitting the lantern and go slow and steady. But that'll cause Zio to spawn a second uh, set of adds. Because the lantern, when it's full, is going to spawn adds. Or you can just bum rush Zio if you think your damage is good enough before a second wave of adds spawn. For now, though, let's soul burn Mercedes. So that, that way she doesn't die. This should do it. For me, I think I'm going to take it slow and steady for the purposes of this guy. So now, right here with Tamarind, we're going to burn. Right? Because next turn we want to see our push. We want to have, don't want to mess up our cycling. So we're going to try to kill this ad. 
Big magic for friends. So now, let's go just bolt. We're going to soul burn here because we want to keep this up. We're going to save the defense buff for after we trigger Zeo's 40%. The reason being that he steals all of our buffs, so we'd like to keep that as long as we possibly can. So we can either Soul Burn Lantern, or we can go for Defense Breaks. Yeah, let's try to do this to see if we push phase. Okay, we push phase. How much can you try from creatures Mercedes. All right, so now all you have to do is just blitz him down. I have no control over my strength. I think I'm going to sing. There is no salvation. Mana is ready. I will release my power. Sober and Mercedes. Beyond the abyss to the end of utility. Nice magic. Obey me. Obey me. You can't close your eyes. Right, so we can soul burn here on Tamarin. Yep. We're going to skill three. Even though she'll die on her next turn, we really just want to rush him down before he kills us. I'm scared. Listen. To my Ladies and gentlemen, let's So we're going to S2 for the damage. Obey me. Obey me. And then soul burn with Roz, and that should end the fight. At the end of the fight, he'll do a big AoE attack. As long as you survive the attack, you win. And there you have it. The Zeo 10-10 fight. I think it's a lot harder if you go into his 40% break phase when there is adds alive. So that's why I made the judgment call to go for the defense break and kill him. If for whatever reason you're still having trouble, please let me know. Ask any questions you have down in the comments. And also, for those of you who have beaten this fight, post your successful teams down in the comments so that other players can see it. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.